Welcome back ladies and gentlemen. It's Benedict again here from Jogging and Company Associates. It's been long since we did our last video and today I'm back and I want us to automate our financial reports uh, using Python programming language. So we'll have a series of videos uh, uh, from step one until we'll uh, finish. So I'll uh, ask you just to be patient, be with us. Let us uh, uh, move step by step. We learn how to automate our routine financial reports. So before we start, let me just try to show you the Excel sheets that uh, we'll read. So we'll start by reading data from Excel sheets, and then we'll combine uh, uh, the data from those Excel sheets into data frames. And then from there, we can manipulate that and uh, uh, code such that we can come up with the uh, financial uh, reports. It's just a click of a button. So let me show you what uh, we have uh, in terms of Excel sheets. So here I have, uh, I have about five Excel sheets. Uh, the first one is YTD. And YTD just year to date. So within YTD Excel sheet is where we have our total balance. So let me try to minimize this uh, the first uh, five columns. So normally when we extract our data from a financial system, we'll have a debit side and the credit side. And uh, when we have the debit side and the credit side, we'll have uh, different categories. And uh, within the categories, we'll also have subcategories. So the subcategories, uh, we've uh, created some two columns to call them uh, ledger and the sub-ledger. So the ledger here is a sub-ledger of the category. And the sub-ledger is also the final details of the category. The sub-ledger will use to create notes to the financial statements and the ledger items and categories what you want to appear within our financial reports. So let me try to expand this other column. So within these other columns we have financial year, we have quarter, we have month, we have period and then we have TB item. So the column for the TBA times is just to categorize whether the rather just to show whether the category of items that we have fall under balance sheet or they fall under uh, uh, profit and loss or they both fall under rather they fall both within balance sheet and PNL. So we also have periods. So here I'm using a uh, January as period one, February as period two. And then uh, we are going up to December, where December is period 12. And then, of course, we also have quarters. So within a financial year, we'll have uh, uh, four quarters. For quarter one is January, February, and March. And quarter two will be, of course, uh, March, or rather April, May, and June. But if your financial year is starting from a different, uh, or rather maybe starting from March or maybe June, so when it starts from March, uh, your period one will be March, and then uh, period two will be uh, April, period three will be uh, May. So it depends uh, where your uh, period starts within your financial year. So I also have uh, uh, different financial years. I have 2017, 2016, and 2018. So the trial balance here is just uh, an expanded trial balance, and then it is a uh, imaginary trial balance. So we can call this company XYZ company, and then it is a trading company. And then for a trading company, when you extract your trial balance, you will not see the uh, the closing inventory within your trial balance. So it then means that when you extract your trial balance, you'll again also go to your trading account and extract the closing balances of the inventory 
and we'll also add to our trial balance. So our original trial balance was uh, was this uh, arrows up to 136. So when I try to, let me just try to total uh, uh, the debits and the credits receive their time. So I'll pick from here to up to the second row. And again, we need to do the same on the credit side. So here we can see our debits and credits are time. So let me just try it one do so that we can have our closing stock. So what I've said, we must first extract the trial balance as it is from our accounting system. And then if the company is a trading company, again, we'll uh, extract the closing stock or closing inventory from the trading account. And then we'll add it to our original trial balance. But the closing stock here is not part of the trial balance per se, but we want to use it. Uh, we are adding it in this template so that we can use it uh, when we are copying so that we can come up with the the p and l and then the the balance sheet in respect to the closing stock so again we also have this excel sheet for our volume in terms of sales so this one this volume may be just the actual volume of sales that we made within uh, the year 2017 and again within this template we have our financial year we have quarter we have month we have a period and then we have category ledger sub ledger value so the category is just the sales volume in metric terms and then we also have a ledger just the sales volume and then the sub ledger also is the sales volume so again we also have budget so the budget here is just uh, a pivoted uh, uh, budget from the original budget so the original budget was this one here so it was running from january to december uh, for year 2017 and then it was the income statement budget and the format for the income statement was as uh, we are seeing here we had the sales volume at on the top then we have sales we have opening stock purchases closing stock and then of course we have cost of sales so cost of sales is a calculated column and then gross margin also is a calculated rather calculated row and then we have direct expenses and we have net margin is also a calculated row we have indirect income so have uh, indirect expenses but this one just a black row from january to december so this is just uh, just showing the items uh, that form part of indirect expenses so this is just the heading then we have uh, total indirect expense which is also a calculated draw so here we, we, we get the sum of all the indirect expenses and then we have uh, earnings before interest tax depreciation and amortization this is also calculated uh, row and then we have interest we have earnings before depreciation amortization and tax this is also calculated row and then of course we have uh, depreciation and amortization and then lastly we have profit before tax so what happens here before we come up with this other a template for budget we need to unpivot these other columns for from January to December, and then we need to ignore the calculated columns and the calculated rows. So let me just try to show you uh, how I did it. So I will duplicate this budget. So this budget here will uh, do away with the calculated rows and calculated columns. So I will delete the cost of sales. I will delete also the 
a gross margin at margin as well I will also delete uh, indirect expenses because just uh, blank uh, blank row then I will do away with indirect expenses total and earnings before interest depreciation and tax as well and then I will also delete earnings before amortization and tax and I will also delete uh, profit before tax then on this on the column side I will delete this full year results then from here now I can change this one to table by highlighting the old table then control T I want to use a pivot table so I will uh, highlight the whole table Okay. Control T. Now I'll click inside, then go to top of uh, this uh, uh, and I'll click data data tab. And I'll click from a table range. So this will take me to query editor. And the power query editor and then within power query editor we'll unpivot the columns from january to december then from here now uh, we need to unpivot uh, the columns within this query rather from january to december so i will highlight uh, Rather select all these columns from January to December. Then I will click transform and and pivot columns. So now we have uh, the columns for particulars, attribute, and value. But the attribute will change this one to a month. Then now uh, we can uh, load back our unpivoted uh, budget and back to our Excel. So now we have uh, un rather the unpivoted columns with the values and uh, months. But we need to add uh, uh, these other columns for uh, financial year quarter. Need to add a period as well. We need to add sub ledger, and we also need to add ledger. So this is the same, uh, rather the same procedure that I did in this other. Uh, uh, Excel sheet uh, written budget underscore one. So it is the same procedure that I did, and this is what I came up with with the uh, uh, these other columns for financial year, quarter, month, period, ledger, and sub ledger. Let me just delete these two. So now we have uh, uh, the total balance, we have uh, sales volume, we have budget, and then we also have asset changes. So asset changes is when we buy an asset or dispose an asset. So when we buy an asset, uh, our cash flow will be affected because money will be going out. And then when we dispose an asset, again the cash flow will be affected because we'll be getting money from the sale of an asset and then again when we sell an asset maybe we are selling it more than the net book value so we'll be having other income that is uh, not part of our normal operations so other income will be adjusted within our or rather the gain in other income will be adjusted within our 
uh, cash flow and then the, the actual amount uh, sold will also appear within our cash flow as investment activities and then we also have uh, loan and investment and within loan and investment template or rather the, the sheet for loan and investment we have share capital uh, we have debt repayment we have loan uh, we, run, we have uh, forex exchange receipts uh, down here i have a uh, uh, list for data value or other data val validation we have share capital debt repayment loan dividends dividend receipts share repurchase debt issuance forex exchange receipts and then down here we also have periods and then we have a period number we have a period so this should be months and then we also have period numbers so here we've uh, rather have made a formula here within Excel such that when we have a debt repayment the value will be negative and then when we have money coming in from maybe share capital or loan injection uh will have positive values uh, within this column for values so these are the excel sheets that we have so what you need to do here is to uh, create a, a python code such that when we just click a button at the end of the financial period or at the end of each each quarter or any quarter we can get our financial statement uh, within with a click of a button so let me take you to where we need to do our python code so here is where we need to come up with the python code such that we can uh, Rather, with just a click of a button, we are in a position to generate all the financial reports from balance sheet, income statement, uh, cash flow statement, and then uh, the notes to the statement. So, from here, or rather, I'm using here a uh, feature as my text editor. Then, the assumption here is that uh, you've gone through the basics of. Uh, uh, Python programming language such that you can import modules uh, to use within the, the Python programming language. So first what we'll do here we'll uh, and then before we start uh, this uh, uh, the module that uh, the modules that we'll uh, mostly use here are uh, pandas and numpy and then the about 90% of the Coding will be done using uh, pandas. So I hope at least uh, you you understand how we use pandas and numpies, and then of course the basics of uh, Python programming language. So we'll start by importing pandas. So we'll import pandas. That's PD. And again, we'll import numpy, then p. And now we need to start from reading, uh, reading the Excel sheets. And from there, we'll uh, see how we can manipulate data. So our first step here will be, or rather our first step will be, Reading Excel sheets, and now we want to call our first Excel sheet, which is YTD or rather the tile balance. I want to call it data. I'll say data to ED dot read. Read Excel okay, in bracket. Then we'll use uh, open and closing inverted commas. Then it will see because my files within the C drive. Then hyphen. Then 
double backslash then i'll write users users in in caps to users then double backslash of the backslash we have desktop and double backslash again we have b underscore f1 then dot x l s x it name is uh, ITD. then now what we need to do is to copy this path and uh, i use it to read uh, the sheet names so here we love data variable for volume and now the sheet name will be uh, this will be volume underscore a then also we we'll have data for budget and then the sheet name will be budget underscore one and then now we have variable for asset set so the sheet name here will be asset underscore changes and the last one is for a variable for loan and investment so we'll say that underscore loan underscore investment then now the naming of the sheet will be loan underscore and underscore investments then if we move on i need to uh, let me try to explain something from the excel workbook so down here we have uh, closing stock but i need to change this closing stock to current assets so such that when we are uh, we will be doing our, our balance sheet it will be easy when we select the category of current assets we will also have selected uh, the, the closing stock however closing stock will use both in uh, balance sheet and uh, yandel so let's uh, do that so i'll go back to the first variable called data so here we'll say data uh, then category category is equal to data then category 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 dot replace so we want to replace closing stock closing stock with the uh, with current assets current assets Again, I want to test if what we've done is, is correct. So what I'll do, we'll try to drop uh, uh, the first four columns of the data frame of the variable called data. So the data uh, as a variable is the data frame. So I want to drop the first four columns so that we can see if uh, uh, the closing stock has been changed to uh, current assets. So first let me try to print uh, data so when i print data you'll see you cannot uh, cannot see the 
you cannot see the the column for rather the label or the column for category so i want to do a drop uh, the first uh, four columns or rather the three columns financial year month uh, uh, quarter the financial year month uh, dbi time and period so what i will do i will come here and see data data is equal to data dot drop in bracket now we want to rather i want to drop uh financial year we also want to drop uh let's let's leave quarter but we want to drop uh, month and then we want to drop what's db underscore item so we are dropping because the data has been frozen so we cannot see some columns so we just want to see if what we've changed uh, uh, what we've replaced with the closing stock is reading current assets so now we can print data EB item uh, not found so let me see what it is TB underscore item What did we write here? TB underscore. Let me let me go back again. TB underscore. Let me read again. We we'll try to print again. Okay, what I did not do, I did not write at the axis, so I must write axis is equal to 1 because we are dealing with the columns. So when we leave, uh, rather when we don't write axis is equal to 1, uh, the term code will assume we want to drop uh, the rows and with the rows axis is equal to 0. So we must write axis is equal to 1. So let's again try to print. So here we can see we have uh, uh, it has been printed but we cannot see the uh, category part so again let me try to drop uh, drop period I want to drop period Yes, now you can see the closing stock has been changed to uh, current assets. So now what we need to do, I will delete this code because you really want to wanted to check if the, the changes that we've made has been affected uh, within the data frame. So our next step here is now to change the uh, credit items with the debit balances negative and also to change the debit items with credit balances negative so what do i mean when i come back to this uh, trial balance you can see we have uh, we have debit side and we also have credit side so there are items of, of category that should fall under credit side and we also have items of category that should fall under debit side so when we get the category of items that should fall under credit side but are having debit balances so we want to tell python code to read the debit balances as negative but the same applies to when we get uh, and the category of items that should fall within uh, uh, 
debit side and they are having credit uh, balances will also tell uh, python to read those credit balances as negative so an example here rather example here is uh, this current asset where we have a loan and advances but we are having a credit balance so this credit balance will tell python to read this as a negative value and then uh, the debit balances of these credit items will also be read as negative so first we'll say turning so this will comment out say turning credit items with the debit balances negative so here we'll say we'll start with the first variable would be tb1 is equal to data dot drop underscore you want to drop uh, the credit side we just want to remain with the with the debit side it's its credit then here we'll say the axis is equal to one because we are dealing with the column so when i print pb1 it should give me a data frame with only the debit uh, column so up here you can see we just have the debit side so now you want to let me try to undo let me so again now what you want to do here is now to change uh, the these values with the uh, debit balances as negative because they are supposed to fall under the credit side so what we'll do again we'll say uh, tb1 is equal to tb1 dot lock first you want to select those uh, category that should fall under the uh, credit side so this is tb1 so here we say category category dot is in bracket so here we have to must have a, a list of the categories that should fall on the credit side but are having debit balances so this will pick from our total balance i'll start with equity And then I'll go to non current and current liabilities. Then again, we'll go to current liabilities. So I'm copying from the Excel side so that I should not have the errors in uh, errors in my code with the with the strings so the next one should be accumulated depreciation so again the next one will follow will be Accumulated amortization. And the next one should be uh, need to take sales. The sales should be on the credit side. So when we get an item of sale that falls. Under debit side, we'll tell Python to read that value as negative, and then we also have uh, indirect income. And 
then what else we have uh, indirect expenses equity token uh, indirect income token so we are good to go so let me do away with this inverted commas so now let's see when we pay tb1 what do we have So this is what we have, but the, the data frame has been frozen so some values cannot be seen. So again what we need to do, we need to drop this rows with the zero values so that we can only have uh, the values with the, rather the, the rows with values. So first we change the zero values to none, meaning not a number, and then we'll drop the uh, the rows with the none values. So what we dot replace it one dot replace in bracket. And we have zero we want to replace zero with NP. NP dot none. Then again, now after replacing NP zero with none, we need to drop the columns with null values. But first, let me try to show you what we have after replacing the zeros with the null values. So this is what we have initially there were zeros now we have none now we want to drop uh, uh, the null values from this rather from the data frame so we'll say tb1 is equal to uh, tb1 dot drop now so drop now means uh, Drop means you want to drop the, the null values, but now we'll say subset. Subset is equal to a debit so because we are dealing with the, the, the debit column. So the subset will be debit. And then now when I print uh, the TB1. Let's see what we have. So now we have uh, the rows with the values. So these values we need to change them into negative. So we'll again create another variable. So we'll say let's call the variable value one is equal to tb1 b1. So here we'll say debit uh, times negative one. Again, we'll come down here and say TB1 equal to value one. For the TB in bracket a bit equivalent to value one so when we print to tb1 now we should be having the negative values yes now we have the negative values so now we want to after, after this we need to rename the the column a bit values so we'll set tb1 uh, b1 is equal to tb1 not to rename bracket what do you want to rename you want to rename columns 
rename columns equal to curly bracket now we have uh, debit you want to rename debit to value so now when we print tb1 see what we have sorry guys that was my problem there's an error so here we have the values that's negative so next what we need to do is to concatenate uh, rather not concatenate but to uh, return the debit uh, items with credit balances negative so again we'll come down here and again we need to comment this one out turning uh, turning uh, debit items with credit balances negative so the same principle applies say tb2 is equal to data dot drop in bracket we have debit so here we're only picking those values with the credit balances that should be on the debit side we want to turn them to negative so axis is equal to one because we are dealing with columns so when i print tb2 let's see what we have here okay Okay, so again I will come down and here and say TB2 is equal to TB2 dot lock TB2 so here you are saying category dot is in so here we'll be picking those uh, category, category of items that uh, will fall under the the debit side but are having negative values or are having credit balances so we'll uh, start from uh, we'll start with the uh, fixed assets And next will be next will be opening stock. So opening stock cannot be on the credit side because it is an it is an asset, and then you cannot also have a negative stock. But if opening stock, then we we'll go to intangible assets. Then we also have current assets. Now we remember current assets also picks the uh, the closing stock beard because we had changed the closing stock category as uh, current assets. And then what do we have again? So let me. And then we also have. Uh, Purchases We have direct expenses Then we have uh, Indirect expenses
the note that we have we have interest as well so here we are picking all the debit uh, category of items that should fall under the debit side all of them so we want to check if they have debit balances so if they have the de debit balances we will uh, turn those debit balances to rather we will turn those credit balances to negative after in a, uh, rather the interest we also have deep and amortization Then we also have uh, I think that was the last so let me just delete this Look there. so let's see when we print tb2 see what we have So again, we cannot see uh, those rows with the uh, uh, with the values that fall under credit, but it should be on the debit side. So we need to delete all the the rows with the zero values in terms of uh, credit balances. And then we'll only remain with those values with the uh, uh, or rather we'll remain with those category with having values on the credit side. So what we'll do again is we'll say TB2. TB2 is equal to uh, TB2 is equal to TB2 that replace we want to replace 0 with the, with the null values NP dot then tb2 is equal to tb2 dot drop now In bracket, so we want to drop a subset of uh, the subset is equal to here. Yeah, now we have uh, credit because we are dropped the debit column and then we are de dealing with the credit balances. So we want to drop the null values of the uh, credit column. So let's try to print TB2. We see what we have again. So at, as we print and get errors, we'll be debugging the code as we move on. So that's why I like printing. So here we have the values. Uh, these are now the credit balances that should be pulling under debit balances. We want to tell Python to read these values as negative. So again, we'll say here value 1. Now it is value 2. Uh, value 2 is equal to uh, TB2 in bracket other credit so times negative 1 and then TB2 in square bracket we have uh, credit is equal to value 2 then now when we print tb2 see what we have now we have the negative balance then again we want to uh, rename this uh, the, the label credit to 
value so we'll say uh, tb2 equal to tb2 dot uh, rename in bracket columns So let's move on again now we have the third step rather than another step so this again will comment out so here we want to say selecting selecting uh, selecting credit items with credit balances So here we are not turning anything negative or positive, we just want to select credit items with credit balances. Again we'll say TB3 uh, is equal to data dot drop. So here we are dropping the, the, the credit of the, the debit side. Because you want to uh, select uh, uh, those category with the credit balances so we must drop the debit side then the axis here is equal to one then we'll come here and say tb3 is equal to tb1 tb uh, tb3 not tb1 uh, dot log tb3 and now category dot is in so now we want to pick all these values up here instead of writing them one by one because these are the values that fall under the credit items again we'll come and paint this one and rather paste inside that uh, square bracket so again we'll uh, We'll try to do away with the values that are uh, zeros, rows having zero values. So again, we'll say EB3 is equal to EB3 dot replace. In bracket zero one p dot dot now and then t b three is equal to t b three dot drop now in bracket subset now the subset here now is equal to a credit
for now in 20b3 then we have a data frame with the all the rows and, uh, and the value column having values there will be no uh, columns with zeros again we want to change this column called credit to value so tb3 is equal to tb3 dot rename dot rename in bracket columns is equal to then now we have credit we'll rename to value and then when we print we should have uh, uh, column labeled value so that is done now we go to another step now we want to uh, and then now it is selecting debit items with debit balances again we say t before is equal to data dot drop here we are dropping the the credit column the next is, is equal to one okay and again we want to say t before is equal to t before dot lock And here we have to be four and category that is in. Then now you want to pick uh, those values that should, will be within uh, the. Within the, the, the debit side, we will pick all these values up. Just in the, the square bracket. So the same procedure follows. So we want to drop the, the zero values, uh, the, the, the rows with zero values. We will say t before is equal to. Uh, tb4 dot replace first we'll replace them the zero values with the null values replace zero with the np dot none then now we'll drop the null values before is equal to tb4 to drop now bracket subset subset is equal to here now we have a debit and then we also need to replace uh, the debit uh, column with the uh, with value so we'll say t before is equal to t before dot rename in bit columns two only bracket then we have we have debit to 
value so now when you print tb4 you should see what we have So we've done away with the columns right? the, the, the rows with zeros and then we also change the debit uh, label to value so the next step here is now to uh, concatenate um, uh, the data frames so the data frames that we are concatenating first will be those uh, those data frames that are for actual values so we have the data frame for rather we love the data frames for the trial balance and the data frame for uh, actual sales volume first and then the data frames for trial balance are this tb1 2 3 and 4 and then we'll also add this data frame for sales volume so what we'll do here we'll say we'll come down here and say concatenation of data frame Concatenate data frames. We'll say here, so we'll call this one data one. Let's call it data one. It's a variable data one is equal to uh, uh, pd dot concat. Uh, in bracket we have uh, a bracket as well we have tb1 and tb2 tb3 tb4 and data we have that v so these are the data frames that we need to concat. And then we also need to because we are having a column with the financial years we want when we read our data the data should be uh, sorted in terms of financial years so when we have 2016 2016 will come on top 17 second and 2018 third and then before we move on uh, let me just try to mention something again so the total balance here is for rather is, is, uh, is cumulative in nature meaning that when we have a uh, trial balance for January when we have figures for for February for example but like now let me just hide all the figures, hide all the years so when we go to 2017 2017 January uh, monthly will be January but cumulative figures also remain as January but when we go to February the cumulative figures for February will mean we'll uh, combine January figures and February figures to have the cumulative figures for February. Same applies when we go to March. When we go to March, so March will also have cumulative figures starting from January, February, and March. But when we calculate the monthly figures, we should have, have different figures for January, February, and March. So the total balance is cumulative in nature. So what we'll do in future is how to calculate the cumulative figures and then come up with the uh, with the monthly figures as well as we also calculate the cumulative. So when I go back to our Python code, so after concatenating these figures, so now we want to uh, sort our data in terms of financial year uh, rather with the column fy so what we'll do here we'll say data data one is equal to equal to data one dot sort 
underscore values uh, then we'll uh, put a bracket then we want to sort by as uh, financial here fy okay so now when i print that one So let me comment this one out. So now you see what we have. We don't have a credit balance or debit balance, we just have values. So some values are being read as negative, others are positive, but we still know that we have debit balances and uh, a credit category of items uh, then from here now uh, we'll uh, because when we are writing our uh, rather when we are getting our values from our trial balance we might have before the text so this is a string before the string we could be having a, um, a space and then after the text, we may, may you might also have a, state, uh, a space. Uh, we'll write a code down here to remove the leading and uh, lagging spaces. So down here, what I will do, I will say, we'll comment out removing. Leading and lagging spaces. So here, what we'll do, we'll say we'll create a variable called calls. I mean columns is equal to data one. Uh, dot select. Other dot select. That underscore you want the types then in bracket here we'll uh, we'll set object we'll say object 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 and dot and down you will say letter one. Here we have called just of course. equal to that one then calls and again we'll apply we need to apply lambda apply lambda just apply lambda x and x dot str to mean to mean string and dot strip and we want to strip the spaces so uh, is it Let's see. D dot data frame into that one. So let's try to 
So here there should be code sign. Let's try to print. Uh, there's no point of printing, but you can just print. But the whatever we're doing here, I'm just trying to do away with the the lagging and and the leading zeros or the leading spaces within. Uh, find something that we've not done, but uh, so far so good. So what we'll do, we'll. Uh, when we come back, we'll uh, we'll start from here, uh, removing leading and lagging spaces, and then we'll move to our next step, of which uh, uh, we'll uh, we'll create variables for current period and prior periods because we are having 2016, 2017, 2018. Or maybe you could be having um, an, an, a numerical yes, rather quite a number of years. So when we are working on the current financial year, so we need to create the variables of the current uh, period or the current financial year. Then we also create the variables for prior uh, periods. And from there now we'll do our calculation. And then current uh, period will be compared with the prior periods uh, using the variables. So we'll stop from there. So when we come back, we'll uh, uh, when we come back, we'll be we'll work on this uh, removing leading and uh, lagging spaces. And then uh, we'll continue with the, the next step. So thanks a lot for watching and let's meet again on the next video.